Hello, fellow life scientists. It is week four, um, day one of this RPS at home experience. I know you've been watching a lot of videos with um, our great Miss Wilson from Albert Hill. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Mr. Nunez over at Franklin Military Academy, and I'm going to be helping out with these videos and these lessons moving forward. So uh, I'm super excited. I hope you guys are doing well. I uh, hope you guys are staying healthy, uh, and we're going to get things going. So this is day one of week four, and the unit is LS8, B, and D. Okay, so the five E's for this week, the first thing um, that we're going to be looking at is the engage portion of that. You're going to be looking at videos of two different organisms interacting with each other. Um, next, you're going to have to explore, and I have an insects and flowers observational lab. Um, next, we have the explain and the extend portion of this week. Um, you're going to be watching a symbiosis video made by Scholastic, which has the scientific terms uh, for these two standards within this unit. And then lastly, you're going to have the Amoeba Sisters video on predator and prey. The end of this week, day three. You're going to be assigned a quizzes um, practice, uh, as well as a Legends of Learning playlist. All right, now for day one. First thing, we're going to be watching videos of different organism interactions. There are going to be three total. And then the second part is going to be our observational lab uh, on insects and flowers. Now, this lab is similar to your lab that you have done last week uh, with Miss Wilson and the, the ants observation. So you're gonna be looking at, you know, going outside, uh, breathing in some fresh air and enjoying your time observing living things. Uh, make sure that you are keeping your student workbook handy during all of these activities uh, because you're gonna be using this to write down your notes, write down your thoughts, your answers uh, moving forward throughout this week. So let's get started. So the very first video is going to be on the ant army that defends the acacia tree. Uh, it's by National Geographic. It's about two minutes long. So let's go ahead and get started. Whenever a huge tree falls in the Costa Rican rainforest, a gap of sunlight is formed in the canopy. New life competes for this light like this vine racing this sapling upward. But there's one tree that never has any competition, thanks to an incredible symbiotic relationship it shares with an ant. The swollen thorn acacia and its namesake, the acacia ant, have developed harmonious roles in each other's lives. The ant's role is as protector. If any of those vines try to steal the acacia's light, the ant security guards go to work. A few good chomps on the vine stems, and it lights out for the vine. That's pretty cool. The ants don't stop there. This relatively huge grasshopper may think it's going to take a few bites out of the non-poisonous acacia, but the ants take a few bites out of it instead. And they throw in a few stings for good measure. In exchange for all this protection, the tree takes on the provider role. It gives the insect everything it needs in terms of food and shelter. These little nodules, or nectaries, secrete a sweet nectar for the adult ants to eat. And these brownish pods at the end of some leaves are the perfect nutrient-packed food for the ants developing young called larvae. The acacia ant larvae live down hollowed out thorns at the base of the acacia leaves. Some will eventually grow into adults with wings and will fly off to replicate this evolutionary masterpiece in a new acacia. All right, thank you for watching that. Now, if you could turn to your 
see, think, and wonder chart. It's going to be in your student workbook. Um, you can pause the video now. Uh, just make sure that you put down three things that you saw, uh, three things that you thought about after watching this video or during the video, and then three things that you wonder after watching this video. Now we're going to move on to the next video out of the three. Parasitic mind control. So this one is also by National Geographic. It's uh, about, I think it's four minutes long, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Two minutes long, I'm wrong. Ants are a part of the most disciplined, dedicated social system on earth. Until that is, they become slaves to behavior controlling parasites. Suddenly, these rogue ants no longer serve the colony. They're taking their orders from the parasite. Okay, let's back up. Now, how did this happen? It all begins when the ants in any town USA consume the slime of a passing snail. They divide it up and take it back to the colony. This is a blunder of epic proportions. Turns out, the slime is loaded with eggs of a body snatcher called the liver fluke, a type of flatworm. The liver fluke burrows into a part of the ant's brain, and for unknown reasons, it's almost like the fluke enslaves the ants and orders them to carry it to their next hosts. Any grazing mammal host with a nice warm liver will do, but in this case, a cow appears. The liver fluke worms can switch the ant's behavior on and off, causing the infected ants to place themselves in easy-to-eat positions at dusk when mammals are feeding. No cows in sight, ants act normal. Cows appear, ants are in essence ordered to take their positions in purple flowers and latch on. The cows ingest the vegetation, the ants, and the fluke larvae inside the ants all in one bite. Once inside the cow, the worms burrow out of the stomach and into the liver, where they develop into adults and dine on liver tissue. They lay eggs that are excreted from the liver into the bile duct, and then defecated by the cows. They don't kill the cows, but the cows become weak and emaciated, devastating herds. And all because of parasitic mind control. Okay, super interesting. Super sad about those ants. But let's see what you think, uh, what you saw, and what you wonder. Again, you can pause the video at this time um, and write down or type down your thoughts. Now we're going to move on to the last video uh, of the day. And that is going to be with the oxpeckers and the hippos. This video is taken from the Smithsonian Channel. And I believe this one is the longest one out of the three. Um, I hope I'm right this time. It's about four minutes. Let's go is also two minutes it's now long. the end of august in the luangwa valley four months of unrelenting dry in the river it's getting harder for the hippo pod to find water deep enough to submerge their exposed backs are too much for ox peckers to resist these little birds eat anything they can glean from a host mammal. Ticks, earwax, dead skin. Having parasites removed does the hippos a favor, but oxpeckers don't stop there. They intentionally keep wounds open, mm. feeding on living flesh. When the pecking gets too much, you have to master the art of the tail flick. <laughs> These pesky birds don't seem to mind taking a shower.
all else fails, a dunking dislodges even the most stubborn hangers-on. No matter, there's always another hippo to hop onto. That. Okay, so with that one, I, if I were the hippo, I'd probably be happy that they're eating the parasites, but then I'd also be annoyed if they're just opening up my skin and now eating my flesh. Ah, anyway, we're we're going on to the next, <laughs> on to the next thing. Let me know what you guys think um, by doing again the this portion of your see, think, and wonder chart. Uh, like always, you can just pause the video, take your time, and then come back to the video when you're ready. Now, the last aspect for today's video is the insects and flowers observation lab. With these instructions, you can use this to fill in the chart that is found on the second page for day one, um, in which you're going to uh, write down what you've observed, uh, make a sketch uh, and infer about what's happening and why they're interacting with each other in that way. Uh, so instructions, uh, go outside for a walk uh, around your neighborhood, your backyard, uh, and observe your surroundings. Uh, find an area of flowers and take a closer look. Uh, for about five to 10 minutes, check to see if, uh, for any insects pollinating the flowers or are on the flowers and think about these questions. Uh, if there are insects around, what is attracting them to the flowers? Um, what are these insects? And are there pollen on these insects? Um, and again, after that, for number four, you're going to look back at your uh, student workbook. Now you can either take uh, the questions, write them down on a separate sheet of paper, and then come back to it when you're back on your computer, tablet, or phone. Or if you have your tablet or phone and you're bringing that out with you, you can answer it on there. Uh, by downloading this page. Remember to make a copy um, if you wanted to do that instead. Uh, see what's happening between these two organisms uh, and then let me know your thoughts. Now we're on to the last page. Uh, these are the update, quick updates uh, to prepare for day two. Um, for day two, you're going to be hearing more about the scientific terms that are associated with LS8, B, and D. Uh, and then you're also going to be writing those uh, or typing those down as notes as you watch. Uh, words like symbiosis that I've used before, new words like mutualism, parasitism, um, and commensalism, those three words you're definitely going to hear. And then, of course, um, I mentioned briefly predator and prey. You're going to be writing notes on those concepts uh, for day two of week four. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, my name is Mr. Nunez. Uh, I'd like to give a quick shout out to, to another teacher from Franklin Military Academy helping out with life science here, and that's Miss Tucker. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great day.